Solana is starting to become one of the absolutely most interesting opportunities in the whole world of crypto. Yes, we do have the 100 and the 1000 X available for the next bull run probably, but guys, 100 and 1000 X are locked. 10x or 20x or 50x in crypto is skill okay and solana is definitely could be a skill opportunity okay and in this video we're gonna go into detail why i think that solana is presenting a better and better opportunity in crypto as we get closer to the next bull run and also what could happen actually in 2023 could solana actually still keep falling down in the next few months okay so we're gonna discuss that and the fundamentals of solana is it really growing or is it getting worse so welcome back once again to ar7 crypto channel and let's start once again a third video about solana so guys in the past we actually predicted that we're gonna drop here to 14 dollars and we even dropped further below even to eight dollars and that was an absolutely crazy buy opportunity but as you can see guys right now solana is kind of between a hammer and an anvil type of situation okay so let me remove some of these okay so that we can see it better okay so generally we're between two very very major trend line when trend lines when it comes to the short to midterm okay so this is why i still think there's a very decent chance that solana could actually keep correcting further uh in 2023 but guys just remember if that happens non-financial advice this is gonna be even crazier opportunity than the 18 dollars solana is at right now okay um but back to the hammer and anvil okay so look First, we finally broke this major uh, bear market trend line that started way back in the top, okay, approximately here. And then we held it as support on the logarithmic scale. So this is fantastic. But that was sort of one major boss to defeat, okay? Uh, the next few bosses that uh, Solana is facing, we still have this, <clears throat> excuse me, trend line that started here from the Terra Luna collapse, okay, back in May 2022. This is also a multi month actually longer than a year already of a trend line okay and look how many times it held this resistance like one two three uh four and five okay and this arguably also was kind of six it wasn't able to get as high okay so we're actually starting to get there and possibly we were already were rejected uh yesterday okay here at the 20 dollars once again uh, of course, we're going to monitor what happens with Sol next, but, you know, this could be actually another rejection or we could get here once again. But if we get rejected once again from this trend line, we're getting back to this even much more important trend line. Okay, why this is, I would even say, the most important trend line in for Solana completely. This is why. Okay, let's go back. Actually, I'll, I'll have to go weekly, okay, to really show you. Look, we're talking basically about a trend line that started the whole major bull run for solana okay we're talking about a trend line from when solana was worth a dollar a dollar at the beginning of the last bull run in late 2020 okay so since here to here solana did a 250x which was absolutely mind-blowing but anyway guys we have this trend line here correct so uh it started way back here and then this major low that we've had in december 2022 uh, at eight dollars, you know this massive fear, uh, um, fear selling that we've had in capitulation for Sol. Look, we've held it as support. So uh, yes, we don't have as many touches as here, but because it uh, goes back to late 2020, and because it was actually from the start of the bull run, and we've held it in this major low, and we almost went to three x from here. Okay, and once again, excuse me, actually just recently we've held it once again, right? So. This is why this other trend line is exceptionally important. So just so we're clear, just so I share completely the way I see things when it comes to, again, to the short to midterm 2023, we're going to get to 2025, of course, later. But when it comes to 2023, look, guys, personally, I'm not going to touch it at all in any, any uh, new DCAs as long as we don't resolve. OK, and like, look. Uh, let's just say if Solana only gets to the $250, right? And we're going to get to the price prediction. We're going to go more into the detail what Sol can do in the future. But let's just now, for argument's sake, let's just say Solana is going to get to approximately $250. Look, guys, I don't care. Personally, I don't care that much if I'm going to get it like at $15, $16 or $20. Also, because I'm not going to go way, way too heavily. I'm just going to DCA. And uh, look, we have a major bear market here for a very long time. So we're going to have plenty of time to DCA at the lower 
price ranges for Sol, okay? So just so we're clear, I really don't want to touch at all Sol until we finally get here or here, okay? And let me actually extend it a little bit. You see, so approximately by the end of August, right? Let me just see. Uh, yeah, by the end of August or maybe early September, this thing here is needs to resolve, okay? We need to decide what happens. Do we break out or do we break down? Okay, this is going to be really major. Now, again, I want to share the short term, what I personally see. I want to explain why actually, again, I don't know for sure what's going to happen because it's short term, nobody knows. But I want to explain why I actually think, for me, there's like a 60 up to 70% chance that it's actually going to break down, okay, uh, instead of up. But again, I still give like 40% that we're going to break up. But I want to explain why I would think it's going to break down, okay? And the next phase of the video is really, really important, guys, if you really want to scoop up some cheap uh, soul, okay? Uh, look, most recently, uh, first of all, the stock market has been going absolutely crazy, okay? Like, yes, this could have been the absolute end of the bear market, but no bear market in the history <laughs> of bear markets end so quickly, okay? So this is why... Uh, recently on many levels, this is actually very overbought, okay? Let me also show you if you guys are familiar with the VIX, okay? VIX is basically just showing the how uh, fearful or not fearful the market is. So look, actually, when it comes to uh, sort of the fear and greed index of the stock market, okay? Uh, it's actually at the lowest, so it's the most known fearful phase for uh, the stock market, okay? Since uh, actually just before the COVID, <laughs> the absolutely crazy COVID dump that we've had after that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, the stock market is going to collapse just like uh, at COVID here, you know, like 30, 40% just in two months from now. But who knows, anything is possible. This is not what I'm saying, but I just want to say that uh, the stock market has had a rally that was really crazy. Uh, sorry, let me go back to the fear here. Um, and look, the market is uh, pretty euphoric at the stock market and we're not even at all-time highs right so to me personally stock market looks overextended okay and you know during the last bear market when uh the stock market was correcting in a major way crypto was also correcting in a major way so we corrected here here in, in uh, you know this is the terra luna and celsius collapse and then here we've had the bottom for crypto so this is the nasdaq but of course let's have a look on bitcoin as well because bitcoin is leading uh, bitcoin is even a more important uh, indicator for what's going to happen with Sol. Um, so when it comes to Bitcoin, uh, look, it is very possible that was the low. Uh, it is definitely still my base case, but you know, in my opinion, we're not completely out of the woods. In my opinion, we can still sort of do maybe a double bottom here or maybe just a higher low, but still some, uh, you know, some correction could definitely happen because look, let me show you what happened during the past uh, bear markets okay like unfortunately with bitcoin we don't have that much history like we have with the stock market but but with the halvings and uh with every, the way bitcoin was designed uh look the market of uh, bitcoin and crypto was still super duper cyclical okay many people were thinking back in 2021 it's gonna be a maybe uh elongated cycle or a different type of cycle or maybe the correction of the bear market is not gonna be as severe this is something that i've heard just from everybody, yeah? So the bear market was still pretty crazy for Bitcoin. So um, the important thing is that so far, the four-year cycle held in a very, very strong way. For me personally, as long as uh, the four-year cycle uh, did not uh, break, okay, as long as every single bull run uh, was happening, you know, every four years, like 2013, 2017, 2021, and then the major bear market, right, happened in 28, uh, 2022, 2018 and uh, 2014 okay and now guys we're at a very very important year right now this is why i'm excited about making this video and just all the videos i make on the channel this year okay um 2023 is the like the pre-halving year okay so the halving for bitcoin is supposed to happen in the next uh next uh, year okay 2024 so um 2019 and 2015 like when you look at you know when you zoom out and look at it here you know, it looks like a pretty sideways year, right? 2019 and uh, 2015, right? Kind of sideways. And then 2016 or 2020, 21, uh, that's when you start to have the bull run, okay? It is definitely still my base case that this is what's going to happen. But I just have to show you guys what happened 
um, particularly in 2019, in the last four year cycle, okay? So similarly to uh, what actually happened recently, okay? When we go to the monthly candles, okay? So uh, look, we actually had a really amazing start of the year, okay? And uh, look, uh, Bitcoin generally had uh, basically five, six uh, monthly green candles, okay, all the way to June. And by the way, back then, the all-time high was 20K and Bitcoin went to almost 14K. So that's pretty equivalent to Bitcoin going now to approximately 45, 48K or something like that. So Bitcoin didn't manage that. But you got to remember that also Bitcoin dropped a lot less than the last time. So, you know, like it doesn't make sense that it will also... Uh, go up so much as it did in 2019. But bottom line, guys, the most important thing that I want to say about here, Bitcoin in 2019, right, is that the first part of the year was really amazing and Bitcoin did here something like a 4, 5, even or closer to 5x. This time we did approximately a 2x. And again, look, I don't know in the very immediate, like, let's say, uh, I don't know in one or two months from now, maybe Bitcoin will keep actually going higher. And maybe it will finally break this range here at 31k or so. But generally, the important thing that I want to say is that I personally expect that, especially because it was so, so similar to 2019 and then 2022 was so similar to 2018, I expect something like that, okay? Uh, and let's maybe ex exclude March 2020 because this was a black swan event, okay? I don't want to include that, okay? But I expect... Something like that, okay? Uh, having like still a downtrend during the second part of the year for Bitcoin, okay? So, and why is that super important? That's super important because uh, when uh, Bitcoin was correcting in such a ma uh, major way in, in the later part of 2019, altcoins were correcting a lot more back then, okay? So, okay? So now back to Solana, right? Imagine if Bitcoin starts correcting within the next month or two, right? And we sort of, as we said, we need a resolution here with Solana up until early September. So if Bitcoin starts correcting on its own, plus the stock market also starts correcting, uh, then I think Solana has a very, very decent chances to correct from here. And then, guys, the really interesting thing is that, look, I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person in the world who's looking at this trend line. I think if Solana breaks this trend line here, I think it's going to be just massive, massive few, uh, selling going on. Uh, as you can actually also see here, right? So, I mean, we did wick below here. So, imagine the people who started selling here like at 8 and something, nine, uh, 8 uh, $9, right? When we started breaking here, um, that was super scary. Or also here, right? Like more recently. Uh, we had the wick here as well, all the way to $12. So uh, next time, right? So if we actually break below and actually this time it's not a wick, but we stay for multiple weeks or months below this trend line, um, I think, you know, <laughs> the market is going to capitulate in a major way and Solana can correct in a crazy, crazy way. But look, because of all of this crazy volume here, and especially if you include the fact that this was like the FTX collapse and like the fear selling on Solana was so crazy, like in late 2022, uh, non-financial advice, right? But like in my personal opinion, I'd be super surprised to see Solana go below $10. And if it does, maybe again, it does it like for a few hours, few minutes, like it did here the last time. Um, but I think there are decent chances that Solana will get to approximately $10. Of course, you know, 10 is a round number, so that could be front run, uh, just like here, right? Like maybe it can just reach $12 again, right? So when I say 10, you know, it's not like only 10, 0, 0, right? It could be 11, 12, $13 as well. Um, but again, then it's going to create a much more crazier opportunity, okay? Okay, guys, so that's the main thing that I expect for Solana for uh, the rest of 2023, okay? Now, I want to analyze what is happening fundamentally on Solana. Is it good enough? And if it is, then if we are right and we hopefully we do correct and or at least that Solana keeps sort of consolidating here between 10 to $20, then we can analyze what is the potential for Solana, how high it can go in 2025 and why I was saying in the beginning of the video that Solana could be absolutely insane opportunity. Um, okay, so when it comes to the fundamentals, okay, the most important things, guys, especially in the bear market, okay, we need to see 
blockchains like Solana not becoming ghost chains, okay? We need to still see activity. We need to still see excitement from the developers. Developers keep building and we need users, okay? Keep using the blockchain, keep using, uh, keep transacting, keep using DeFi and keep using NFTs, okay? So we need to analyze all of that. Is this, all of that still good for Solana? If it is, that's fun, a fantastic sign and that's what could create for us a major opportunity. So let's analyze, right? So first, let's go just to SolScan Analytics, which is one of the uh, you know best places to really understand what's going on with Solana. So let's start with active wallets. That's one of the most important indicators. It uh, you know over here we can see it's wallets that signed at least once within the observed period, which I believe to be one month. Okay, so at least one wallet that did something on the Solana chain at least once a month. Okay, so when it comes to the active wallets on the Solana blockchain, very important thing that I want to say is that we are lower than when uh, where we were even in 2022 and uh, prior to the FTX collapse and also in for most of 2021 okay but check the interesting thing okay so we still have here approximately 200 and something 300 and something uh thousand of uh active wallets on chain on Solana okay and these numbers are actually similar to here to July, June, uh, May, April 2021. And why is that interesting, right? Is because the price right now is approximately $18 and we're ranging here, right, at $10, $18. But you see these two yellow lines that I have here, right? So between late April until July, right, uh, Solana was actually in this upper uh, range, right? Solana back here was between $30 to 50 something dollars right and then it was able to even go a lot higher okay so when we compare to the first part of 2021 right we have um we've had approximately the same amount of active wallets right now than that we've had in june july 2021 uh but the price is approximately 2x lower and we're in this lower range okay so we're definitely a lot more undervalued than we were here and once again in the past bull run, uh, Solana got even a lot higher than that, okay? So that's already a pretty nice sign, but I have to mention the next thing, okay? That look, over here, okay, once you've had this major spike over here, uh, right, we got to approximately a million active wallets, okay? Like a 3x more active wallets than we've had before. And this is when Solana really got to the highest points it had, okay? Like to the 200 and something dollars, okay? So next time, basically, we will have to see, right, that uh, Solan, that the active wallets keep climbing higher, okay? And if, remember, this is also a very, very important thing. If we start to get, again, to the 600,000 uh, active wallets or even a million active wallets here on analytics, solscan.io, uh, and the price, you know, normally the on-chain is a little bit front-running the price, right? So... If that's what's happening on chain and the price is still not that high, guys, this is a major, major buy signal for me. Okay. Uh, if you saw my other videos, I analyze on chain a lot as well. And uh, this is a major, major sign. Okay. If you have a lot more activity, but the price remains the same, this is again non financial advice. This is an absolutely no brainer of a buy. But anyway, that was the active wallets, right? So when it comes to the active wallets, to some what we were talking about, it is pretty good that we're in the same range that we were in the early part of 2021, but we have less wallets than, than we've had in 2022 and also in the later part of 2021. So at the very least, I would like to see the active wallets climb back to th these regions of like 600,000 active wallets, right? So um, when it comes to active wallets, I would sort of give it a B. B minus or B plus, something like that to solve. It needs to improve, but it's not very bad. It's definitely not a ghost chain. So that's a very good thing generally. Then guys, I want to see these two things, okay? This is just the new uh, SPL tokens that are being created on the Sol chain. And, this, uh, and these are the new NFTs, okay? And this also shows us the uh, new activity also from the developer side, okay? Uh, on Solana, okay? So the SPL tokens, actually looking fantastic look look like that uh, look, look at that like we generally have approximately the same amount of spl tokens being created than we've had actually in uh, in the bull run of 2021 
And generally, in the late 2022, beginning of 2023, we have a lot more SPL tokens being created than here. So that's going to be super interesting, right? So it's early projects and we're going to see if they're going to be successful or not. But, you know, the more uh, successful SPL tokens you have on the soul chain and the more value they draw to themselves, the more value is also going to go to Solana. Okay. This is a very good sign, and this is definitely an A plus, okay, for uh, SPL tokens here on Solana. Next one is new NFTs. This one is kind of so-so, okay. So uh, in the bull run, and then in the beginning of the bear market, we've had a lot, a lot of new NFTs being minted, which was very good. But then check this out: from April 2023, there was actually a big collapse in the amount of new NFTs being created. Now. One of the important and interesting things is that actually just generally uh, the NFT market is experiencing even <laughs> a prolonged and more crazier bear market than, than, the, than the tokens experienced, right? So, for example, Bored Ape Yacht Club just very recently collapsed a lot in its floor price. So just the NFT general world keeps bleeding more and more. So this could be the reason why uh, it was like that. But this is another one that we will have to keep watching, similarly to uh, the active wallets here. Look, it has to uh, go back up, okay? If it remains like that, this is not a very great sign. Even though there are a lot of NFTs already on Sol, you want to see new ones, okay? And you want to see them again being minted uh, in box, okay? Just like in the past, uh, just like in the past bull run. So this is not so great. I would even say sort of the worst. Uh, fundamental thing that from the things that we've analyzed today so this will have to improve this is something that we will have to watch out for uh, the next bull run does it improve before the bull run or no so this i would even say this is like a c okay this is not very great uh we will keep analyzing that okay guys next thing is that look uh, this is another thing that's related to the uh, amount of new wallets okay so we definitely want to keep seeing more and more cumulative uh, new wallets being created. So the interesting thing is that actually, okay, on one end, we've had the new NFT collapse here in May and June. This is why you see Solana is still doing very interestingly. But in May, we've actually had a lot more monthly active users. Okay, look in May here. And you know, May was still the bear market, right? So it's not like we've had some major bull run here. Uh, we've had a lot more monthly active users than the prior months or the prior five months okay and also when you do this cumulative right uh you can see that we've had this major spike so just generally you have more and more wallets more and more active users doing something on the chain of solana which is very very important which is what we want to see and uh, if you saw my avalanche video on avalanche you also have a lot more users so these two chains solana and avalanche are super interesting because they keep generating more users, more activity, more innovation, and more stuff is going on. Let's continue, guys. The next thing I want to show you guys is uh, the wallet. Let me refresh here. Uh, the next thing I want to show you uh, is the volume, okay? This one is actually also approximately like a B minus, okay? I'm going to explain why. On one end, I like that Solana is still holding up here at the top 10, right? With Ethereum and all the major layer tools, BSC, Pulse Chain was very successful recently. And Aptos, also not very bad. But look, Solana has $31 million worth of volume on the Solana chain, which is not that bad, but it's not that impressive uh, uh, as well, okay? Like Phantom, for example, in my personal opinion, anything below than $10 million nowadays is almost a ghost chain, okay? So Solana is actually sort of the last chain that I would deem as not... Um, ghost chain okay uh when it comes to the DeFi and when it comes to the dex activity dex volume that's happening on the solana chain now if you guys remember solana was a lot higher in the past so it did collapse here like when it comes to the volume on uh, radium and orca on the decentralized exchanges on solana uh it actually got uh worse like and, and i mean every, all crypto got worse but i'm saying that solana like actually even got worse in comparison to Avalanche dropping in volume and BSC dropping in volume and Polygon dropping in volume and so on. So when it comes to the volume, uh, again, why I say B minus, because like this is not a ghost chain. So what I'm checking about Solana, the most important for me when I analyze cryptos, especially blockchains for the next bull run, I just want to see, as I said, activity. I just want to see success. I just want to see new innovation, new development being done and uh, volume and, you know, people doing stuff. So when it comes to DeFi and DEXs, 
uh, Solana is hanging up there. It's at 30 something million. Actually, yesterday when I was looking at that, that was even closer to 50 million. So the volume on Solana is pretty nice. But look, like in order for it to be uh, really successful, it has to challenge back here in the top five region, right? So Pulse Chain, for example, has $74 million. It's not that much more, but it's still like approximately a 2x more. So Solana wants to like, you know, fight here with Polygon and uh, Pulse Chain and BSC, I guess, has a lot more volume. So this is like the top three, right? So Solana needs, as we said, to try and be here to top four, five, six. Right now it's top nine or something like that. So uh, when it comes to volume, not that great, but still not a ghost chain, which is the most, most important. Okay, guys, so now I want to go to the DeFi TVL and it will actually sort of uh, explain a little bit what was happening here with the volume. And if you saw my uh, other video that I've made about Solana actually pretty close to the bottom uh, when it was $14 in November 2022, I explained that Solana's TVL collapsed like even more than all the other big chains. And probably, again, FTX was a very, very uh, major reason why that happened. OK, um, but anyway, what I want to show you here is that, OK, the TVL collapsed like in this major way. OK, like uh, uh, Solana had a TVL of 10 billion dollars and now it's like a 200 million dollars. And again, if you saw my past video in November 2022 about Solana, um, generally like Solana's TVL even uh, collapsed like 10x in comparison to Ethereum's collapse. You know what I mean? So like, so let me explain. So Ethereum's TVL was a hundred billion dollars, right? Right now it's twenty-six billion dollars. Okay, so it collapsed only by seventy-five percent, right? From a hundred to twenty-something billion, right? So when we go back to uh, Solana, um, Solana was at ten billion, right? Ten x less than Ethereum, but it didn't collapse to two billion. Okay, uh, if it would have collapsed to two billion, it would have been, you know, the same as Ethereum but it collapsed to 200 million. So it collapsed, <coughs> excuse me, 10x more than Ethereum's uh, TVL, okay? So that was very major, that was way too much. So again, it's not very great. And that makes sense why the volume is also lower because there's less liquidity on Solana right now. So this is something that I will keep looking at that it has to improve for Solana to be successful. But the interesting thing, guys, is that uh, it looks like really primarily the volume in the TVL also is pretty uh, bad, right? Because like if we compare to the fees, to the amount of activity that we were seeing on Solana right before that in the prior uh, tabs here, um, look, the interesting thing that when I was just analyzing that I wanted to show you is that in the past, the fees, okay, that are being paid on the Sol chain and the TVL was sort of following each other. You see, like it was following each other in the bull run and even in the bear market, you see, it was very kind of going together. This was like, you know, sort of oversold because this was the Terra Luna collapse. But then you see they sort of uh, met once again, the blue line and the uh, purple uh, area chart, right? But then... Look, once again, as we mentioned, the FTX collapse. Look at that. Like, this is where it ha when it happened. And you see, like, the TVL still remains like a 200 and something. Still remains very low, the blue. Okay? But the purple, okay, the fees have recovered. Okay? The fees here, they got higher. So this is pretty interesting, right? So it could be that really, for whatever reason, the TVL and the volume on Solana are still very low, but like the activity on chain is still pretty high. So uh, again, we'll have to monitor what's happening with TVL, but I definitely think that this is like a, an Achilles heel that if um, Solana is able to fix and work on that, uh, Solana, uh, if its TVL will get higher and then the volume will get higher, I think it will help Solana in a major way to, uh, you know, to go a lot higher in its price once again. So guys, we have one more last thing to see what's happening fundamentally uh, in Solana. And finally, we're getting to actually the best thing, in my opinion, when it comes to Solana. And uh, we also sort of discussed that a little bit. That was one of the major things that has helped Solana to go all the way to 200 and something dollars, okay? And I am talking about the NFT, okay? The NFT marketplace and anything related to NFT trading on the chain, okay? So guys, uh, if you're new to crypto, in the past bull run of 2021, <clears throat> we've had two really major, major big innovations that have drove all of this price appreciation that we've had in 2021. One was DeFi that we've already analyzed, decentralized finance. And the second was NFT, non-fungible tokens, okay? 
So, in my opinion, anything related to non-fungible tokens NFTs is still like exceptionally early and exceptionally rudimentary, and the technology will improve, in my opinion, tremendously from here. Like I'm personally long-term exceptionally bullish on NFTs, and I think they're gonna become, you know, maybe like a decade from now or even uh, after that. I think they're gonna become like a very, very major thing in all of our lives. Okay. Um, but right now we're super early and, you know, we have lots of, we have lots of JPEGs and, you know, lots of crazy stuff, just like we've had with the internet in the nineties. Okay. So anyway, back to, this is the fundamental. So, um, what I like to see about Solana. Okay. Look in NFTs, I think they're going to be very major long term. Okay. So in my opinion, you see this pie here, this pie chart here is exceptionally important. Like, I think these three right now, Ethereum, I mean, is a blue chip. So then Polygon and Solana. The way I personally see it right now, you know, I'm going to analyze what's going to happen later, of course. But right now, these two chains, Solana and Polygon, to me personally, guys, like even after we discuss the DeFi and the uh, on-chain activity and stuff like that, for me personally, for the next bull run, these two, Polygon and Solana, they are like a no-brainer to me right now for the next bull run, okay? Because they corrected in a major way, they've had a major bear market. But when it comes to the NFT world, which again, I think is going to be exceptionally big in the future, uh, these two are like, you know, Ethereum is number one. But why Polygon and Solana, I, I think, are super important at number two and three? Because Ethereum is uh, more expensive, okay? So it's a lot more of a whale game, okay? So if you look at the volume, you see... Uh, in the volume, Ethereum is 92% because the volume on the Ethereum chain is much bigger because the transaction fees are also like $10, $20 are also a lot higher. So you need to be transacting at much larger amounts of Ethereum. But on um, total to amount of transactions, you see like over here, Solana and Polygon uh, or Ethereum is only 49%, right? Uh, so, and you gotta remember, we like almost have no retail right now because we've had a major bear market in crypto and, uh, you know, once the bull, mar the bull market is coming back, just like in late 2020 and 2021, if you guys remember, like one of the primary reasons why Solana was so successful and Matic was so successful in BSC is just because Ethereum was expensive and all the new retail, they came to Ethereum and what the heck, I like a Uniswap trade is more for hundred dollars and they started going to all of these other chains. So Polygon and Solana being here such two dominant figures in the world of NFTs just right after Ethereum is like, in my opinion, positioning them very, very strongly for the next bull run. So as long as here, guys, here particularly, and I'm going to leave the uh, link for this in the description below so that you, you can also see that. As long as Solana and Polygon, or at least uh, the videos about Solana, right? As long as Solana is here, very high okay and then the other is still like almost non-existent right like other is all of the other blockchains they have less than one percent of the total uh, transactions that are nfts on chain right so as long as solana is here number two okay or in the top three with this three in my opinion like it's an absolutely no-brainer okay so when it comes to nft which is again major innovation in crypto when it comes to the NFT dominance, Solana, in my opinion, is a big, big A+. Okay, so to sum up all the fundamentals that we're analyzing to see how well Solana can do in the bull run, okay, so NFT, A+, and very important, okay, volume, B-, minus. TVL, also something like B-, minus, but interestingly, could be way too oversold and maybe it will improve, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, on-chain activity, I will say like, you know, something like maybe thanks to this, maybe like uh, A minus B, something between an A minus to B plus. OK, so generally, generally Solana is not a ghost chain, even when it comes to the volume and the TVL, even though the volume and the TVL are the Achilles heel is what is not going so well with Solana the way I see it. Um, the activity on chain is pretty good. And then the NFT is absolutely fantastic. Generally, to sum all of this up, Solana, in my opinion, is still positioned right now in a very, very good position in order to be very successful in the bull run. But once again, we will have to monitor that this remains and that they do improve their TVL, guys. Like, you know, there's a lot of activity on chain, 
a lot of dexes uh, you know a lot of new dexes being built and uh, they have to re-improve once again here so this is also something that i'm gonna watch out for so all of that being said guys let's finally get to the price prediction section of the video and i'm talking about like 2025 right we discussed 2023 let's actually discuss what is the potential for solana by 2025 okay so the interesting thing guys like i don't know if you've seen but i've had here also the ethereum chart open and finally soon you'll understand why do i have here also the ethereum chart okay <clears throat> so look guys the really fascinating thing with soul in my opinion is that uh, I saw a few people like Raul Paul talk about it, and it's something that like doesn't leave my mind recently. That maybe Solana is one cycle behind Ethereum. Okay, and let me explain why I think so. Okay, and the reason I need to go to Coin Gecko is just because we don't have the history back to um, you know when uh, Solana only launched in March April 2020. Um, but look, the interesting thing, guys, with Sol. Okay. Is that its all-time low here in May 2020 was approximately 50 cents, okay? And that was in May 2020. Then, for Ethereum, it also was around 50 cents back in 2015, okay? Uh, that was way back here, okay? So look at that. So we're on the logarithmic chart of Ethereum, and this is the logarithmic chart of Solana, right? So Ethereum sort of had something similar here. So uh, it uh, collapsed here like to 50 cents to $1. And then that was sort of the beginning. That was sort of the first phase of the, you know, like it literally did here approximately a 10x. And just also remember that Ethereum's market cap over here was actually lower than Solana, right? Because Ethereum has less supply, right? So the supply of Ethereum is 120 million tokens. Solana is uh, total supply is 500 and 400 circulating. So this is also something we need to remember that 50 cents for Sol when it comes to market cap is not equivalent to 50 cents of Ethereum. But uh, 50 cents is a fantastic sort of thing to understand, to wrap our head about what's going on with Ethereum and Solana. So as we mentioned, Ethereum went higher here to the $10 range and stayed here. And then it had this massive bull run, right? So... Uh, and it also took approximately like half a year, right? From like October, November 15 until uh, mid-2016. Then for Solana, it was kind of similar, right? So in the early part of 2020, it was 50, 60 cents. And then it went here to approximately $4. It was almost a 10x also, similarly to uh, Ethereum. Uh, then it had a little bit of a, a little bit of a harsh correction. It corrected here to a dollar, just like Ethereum also had a correction. You know, at the time it was a major correction from twenty dollars to uh, even under eight dollars to seven dollars. Okay, and then it had this massive bull run. Okay, so this was <coughs> excuse me, like the first major phase of the bull run, the first part of the year, and this was the second part of the year. Once again, Solana was very similar. First part of the year. <clears throat> right, it went all the way from a dollar to fifty dollars, and then in the second part of the year, with this NFT success we discussed, it even got to two hundred and something, which, <clears throat> excuse me, was the top, okay, for Solana. And if again we compare the supply of Solana, right, with the supply of uh, Ethereum, right, like uh, Ethereum at a thousand dollars and Solana at two hundred and something, when it comes to the market cap, was pretty similar. Okay, so the top for Sol over here in November 2021 was pretty similar to the top of Ethereum in the cycle of 2017 and uh, early 2018, okay? Um, and then Ethereum had this major, major, major bear market and it corrected all the way from $1,400 to $80 something. dollars. And once again, guys, that's super interesting that Solana also corrected to uh, $8, as we know uh, from the trading view chart, okay? So again, why is that interesting? Because it's also like, you know, Ethereum was 80 and Sol <laughs> corrected to 8. Uh, and again, as I mentioned, personally, I uh, anything is possible, but I don't expect to Sol uh, Solana to uh, get to $8 again, maybe again, you know, for in a super brief period, just like Ethereum maybe corrected in March 2020. But generally, guys, when we look at that, okay, the most important thing, guys, is that right now, if we are right that Solana is following the path of Ethereum in the adoption and it has such a similar market cap type of situation with Ethereum, right? 
uh, <clears throat> look, Ethereum, <clears throat> we're not here like at the $8 anymore, but you know, we are arguably somewhere here, like, you know, the 180, 200 region. So, right, Ethereum even went back then uh, to uh, $300, uh, all right? Uh, so maybe we also will get to 30 or maybe we already kind of already did with, a, uh, you know, when Solana went to $28. But generally, guys, look, the important thing is just, Look at this, guys. Just look at all of this, all of this amazing times, okay? Like, even even this top, right? You, you don't want to buy the top, you know, 300 because then you can collapse like 70%. And then you sort of, you know, when you're here, it's very scary to collapse right that, uh, like that, right? From 300 to 100. But look, at the end of the day, when, uh, you know, imagine this is now 2025, right? Ethereum did went to like $4,800, you know? Like, it still did a 3x more than the prior all-time high okay so if solana will have fundamental success from everything that we've discussed and if solana will be able to do something similar to ethereum and it is following ethereum so far in a, in a crazy crazy way okay this means the next few very important things okay thing number one is that if the market cycle uh, of the general crypto will be similar we should have some new opportunities to scoop up Sol, hopefully, hopefully, I really hope we do, at $10 or $12, you know, and to buy like maybe larger chunks when Sol is getting to these prices. But then once Sol is getting to the all-time highs, okay, and again, if this is, this is just crazy, right? Like if this is uh, almost exactly the same like Ethereum, right? So Solana is supposed to stay here for a long time and then in 2025 finally it needs to rocket all the way here to like 750 you know if it's gonna be 3x more than the prior high we're talking about 750 it could also maybe even reach a thousand or something close to that but you know generally i don't like to be way too uh crazy in my price predictions so to sum up why i think so to sum up why for me personally solana is uh, just a crazy crazy <laughs> opportunity is because once we see how it's following the Ethereum path and once we see its fundamental success and maybe it will have even more fundamental success for Solana, uh, you know, 750 is a target that is pretty high. Uh, it's not like my low end target, but it's a decent target. So, you know, like even from the current price, right? Uh, or if we round it up to $15 or to $20, you know, if you buy so at $20, and it goes to 750, we're talking about a 45X, okay? Just what Ethereum did, and that's not even from the bottom. That's like 2X from the bottom. So imagine if Sol is really getting to $10 or $20, $20 excuse me, if it's getting to $10 or $12, then we're talking about a 70X in one cycle, and that's absolutely insane, guys, because we're talking about the cryptocurrency that is number 11. Or even higher because it includes USDT and USDC, right? So Solana is like number nine in reality. Uh, so and, and you know, like it's not we're not early anymore, right? Like look at Ethereum; it's not like it's fifty cents. Okay, crypto is not early anymore. But if Sol is able to repeat what Ethereum has done, okay, and it's a major coin, right? It's not some some small coin that you if you buy a thousand dollars worth of this coin, you'll obliterate the price and then you're gonna have too much supply, right? Solana, you can buy a million dollars, right? And you won't move the price, right? Like you can literally buy without any, obviously most people don't have this amount of money, but just generally you can buy whatever amount uh, you want with Sol. And in my personal opinion, from this price, you can still do something like a 30X, right? So this is the major reason why to me personally, Solana is a major opportunity and I was following Solana. I was a big bull on Solana in, back in 2021 as well. And I was following Solana throughout this whole bear market. And guys, I was super happy to see Solana correcting in such a major way all the way to $8. Because in my opinion, this is going to create one of the biggest opportunities for the next bull cycle of 2025. So guys, I was once again AR7 Crypto Channel. I hope you found this video valuable and it helped you. Subscribe to the channel. As you can see, I'm making soul videos every time I have something new and important to share. Uh, and yeah, guys, I hope you have a fantastic week and a fantastic weekend ahead. And cheers as always.